Jake Knapp is the inventor of the design sprint and the New York Times bestselling author of the book Sprint. He's also the co-founder of Character, a venture fund for early stage startups. How and why did you start using Miro? I came from this position of thinking, I don't want to be doing stuff online to thinking now when I do a sprint in person with a company, it's like, we're going to use Miro, even though we're all in the same room, because that's a better way for us to get this work done. As an investor, we're basically investing in their ability to solve problems. We're saying, we think this group of people is going to be able to solve a problem in a really great way and create value by doing it. And actually, you need to give people the tools that can help them make decisions, help them collaborate, help them visualize and see things in a different way. And Miro does all those things. So to me, at least as an investor, I'm thinking, give the team the tools that are going to help them think, that are going to make the most, brighten their, their skills as smart folks. And Miro is at the top of that list. No breaks. No breaks. No breaks. No fear, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along, I'm Ian Brannan, and it's a massive week, not just in British Speedway, but in World Speedway. The Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations gets underway in Denmark, and for the first time in 32 years, Great Britain are the defending champions. Coming up later on, our very special guest is Great Britain Joint Team Manager Ollie Allen. He'll be looking back on that success in Manchester in 2021 and looking ahead to Great Britain's mission in 20. 2022, which is simply to bring home the golds again. I know Ty and Robert in particular, you know, anything other than gold, they will they will view that as a failure, which, you know, if you wound, wound, wound back the top 12, 12 months, it probably wouldn't be. But, you know, they, they want to win. They want to, they, they are winners. That's what they, that's why they race. And that's all coming up in part two onwards with Ollie Allen. We're also looking ahead to the British final, which takes place on Monday, the 1st of August at the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. The British title and a place in the Grand Prix in Cardiff up for grabs. We'll hear from the current champion, Adam Ellis. And congratulations to Leon Flynn who's become the under-19 champion. We'll hear from Leon later on as well. Plus a roundup of everything from the Premiership, the Championship, the Championship Jubilee League and some other bits as well thrown out in there for good measure, I'm sure. Here on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Lots to come then, and uh, our chat with Ollie Allen I'm sure you'll find fascinating. Uh, not just looking ahead to what's coming up this year uh, with our chances in Voyens. Of course, we've got the semi-final first up and then the uh, the big final at the weekend. But um, also looking back and a bit of the inside story of that win last year and um, just exactly what was happening behind closed doors, the meetings that they were having and, and how Ollie and, and Simon Stead saw the meeting and, and, and how they thought it might pan out and of course that moment of realising they've done it you know Great Britain are going to be uh, the champions of the Speedway of Nations and, and British Team Speedway on, on top of the world for the first time in over 30 years so um, it's a fantastic t- tale and that's on the way in a little while here on No Breaks No Fear. Uh, right now though let's have a look at uh, the action from Monday night in the Premiership uh, there's been plenty going on in the Premiership not just on Monday but of course from last week as well because there were meetings on Thursday and to take us on a roundup of everything that's been happening in British Speedway's Premiership over the last seven days or so. Uh, I'll hand over to Ryan Guest. Well, yes, thanks, Ian. And we start in the West Midlands where Wolverhampton held off a strong Kings Lynn challenge to come through with a 49-41 victory at Monmouth Green. It was a significant result in the playoff race as Wolves are now 12 points clear of the Stars who do have two matches in hand but left frustrated that they had not secured at least one league point. A 5-1 from Wolves duo Drew Kemp and Ryan Douglas in Heat 14 suddenly extended the lead to eight points on the night, confirming match victory before Sam Masters won the final race. The home skipper dropped just one point to the opposition, while Luke Becker also stood out, winning four of his six rides, and I caught up with the American after the meeting. Well, Luke Becker, without Nick Morris uh, ruled out through illness, it was always going to be a, um, a, a big ask for the team tonight, and it was certainly a hard-fought victory in the end over Kings Limp. Yeah, once uh, we found out the news about Nick, that was definitely a, a downer on us. You know, it's uh, missing one of your top riders, of course, isn't easy. So we we knew uh, we were going to have to be on top of our game. And uh, to come out with a win, we should be nothing but proud of ourselves. Yeah, Kings Lynn really did take it to you tonight as well, didn't they? Yeah, we had uh, we, we were scratching our heads for a second there. And, um, you know, but that's all part of it. you got to keep your, keep your cool. And, um, 
keep your uh, mind on the job. Yeah, like I say, with the way the league table was shaping up as well, to get another three points, to send them home with nothing as well, uh, a big result when it comes to those playoff positions. Yeah, that was uh, that's what Pete told us from the beginning. We needed needed to send them home with nothing. That was uh, the main aim. Of course, we're, well, main aim is to win, but that was uh, the icing on the cake. So hopefully we can just keep that form going and um, keep that form, especially here at home. Yeah, for yourself individually, six rides, four wins. So um, 12 points here tonight, and you, you did pull off some uh, some really quick quick um, impressive maneuvers up the inside down that back straight as well yeah no i think i think if i'm correct i think it was either a win or a last so um a bit inconsistent but yeah you got to take the positives and um definitely need to work on starts it's always been my main thing is uh getting out of the gate so that's going to be the main focus and if i can get those dialed it'll make life a lot easier yeah like you say a little bit of inconsistency with two last places and four first here tonight if you look at the consistency overall though in in the last few meetings here at monmore starting to find double figures once again yeah that's uh being strong at home that's, that's definitely key so and in our reserves too are definitely seem after today they're uh picking up the pace and looked really good so that's uh nothing but positives for the team now it's time to hear from the two team managers shortly we'll hear from a frustrated king's Lynn boss alex brady who also provides us with an interesting team update but first here's the victorious gaffer on the night wolves is peter adams speaking with bbc radio wm's mike taylor peter that feels like a very important win in so many ways yeah absolutely we knew it was important to send them home with nothing which we just about did and uh, all in all, it was a very good, entertaining match. Yeah, there were a lot of good racing. I'm particularly pleased for the two reserve lads because not only did they win heats, but they won them at really important times. Yeah, it was uh, crucial, you know, that they contributed something tonight, and uh, they did. I mean, uh, I got to just mention Drew Kemp, who I thought had his best meeting here that I've seen this season. And uh, if he can keep that up, you know, then we're going to be in business. Yeah, the one point he'd had up to that point really didn't flatter him at all. He'd, he'd, he'd ridden better than that. Um, uh, Nick Morris was, was on well. Hopefully he's not too bad. Yeah, I think the heat uh, a week ago got him <coughs> uh, seriously dehydrated. He's been in bed since Wednesday, I think he was saying. So uh, difficult without him because he's a double-figure scorer here every time. And... Uh, but well, we got over the line just. Yeah, there's a lot of meetings still to go, but the way that the table has gone, and particularly with this result tonight, you're back to double figures ahead of Kings Lynn. I mean, it's beginning to look like it is going to be those top four teams after all. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think it's looked that way for a while, but uh, things can change very quickly in this game. Uh, injuries like Ipswich have suddenly suffered. Things like this, you know, can uh, can undo your aspirations in a flash. So uh, we've got to keep everybody healthy and um, and in good form, obviously. Well, Alex, uh, 49-41 defeat here at Wolverhampton, just narrowly, narrowly missing out on a on a league point, and, and that must feel like a a real uh, a real cruel statement with the, the effort that the boys put in and, and held with Wolverhampton tonight. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's for us. It was you know, eight ten when we went for the for the final interval, um, uh, the final track grade. We felt that we were in a position there to go on and, and go on to win it. So to come away without a single point is a yeah, bit of pill to swallow. But it's not over yet. Um, you know, I think we're going to go on a bit of a run uh, with hopefully our new signs to come in for Ipswich at home. Um, but yeah, tonight is is is, is tough. Yeah, it must have been tough as well because um, you gated so many times, either on a, a 5-1 or a 4-2, and, and Wolf, Wolves riders just managed to, to find a way on the opening lap up the inside, didn't they? Yeah, they're masters of the circuit. Um, I felt that we didn't perhaps learn as, as quickly as we should have done from, from a few of those rides um, and overshooting Ben 2 quite often um, and allowing their riders to come up the inside of us, which is, which is disappointing. We, again, we spoke of the importance of that before the meeting, during the meeting. Um, and yeah, to, to sort of see it sort of not quite not quite work out for us, and perhaps carried a bit too much speed into those bends. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it is tough when you, as you say, we're leading most of those races um, on heat advantage a lot of those races, and yeah, to come away with either a free all against us, uh, a free all or, or a heat advantage against us is yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah, I know it was a big meeting as well, obviously, because you'd got a, a couple of meetings in hand. You were fifth, Wolves were in, uh, in fourth as well. It was nine points of the difference, so that's now, that's now tw- 12. So um, that, that does open up a, a big gap between, between yourselves and the playoff positions now. Yes, I, I think it does. But, I mean, Wolves have lost twice at home the same as we have. Um, so we just know we need to match our away record, um, win, win away. Um, we've got some uh, meetings coming up I think we could do well in. Uh, Ipswich at home and Ipswich away. Uh, Sheffield in the middle of those two as well. 
Um, and then we have, still have to race Peterborough home and away as well. So there's, there's winnable matches there and you know, I, I still think the playoffs is on. Yeah, I know yourself and uh, Captain Josh Pickering have been hinting at it over the past week or so as well about uh, potential news on a, on a new number one. Speaking on, on Monday night, um, hopefully hopefully have some news on that later this week. Yeah, it certainly aims to be this week. Um, almost certainly in place for, for Ipswich at home next Thursday. Um, and yeah, I'm excited by the prospect of having a, a full one to seven again of our own riders. Although Kyle tonight did a, a brilliant job as a guest for us. Um, there's nothing quite like having your, your own team together. So yeah, I think that's going to be a big difference. Um, and I think that... As I say, I'm, I'm confident we can still go on a run from here and, and make those playoffs, but obviously we need to st- start turning the screw at some point and it, it needs to start next Thursday. Elsewhere on Monday, Bellevue demolished Peterborough 63-27 to move back to within two points of Premiership leader Zipswich. The Aces started the meeting with three five ones and a 4-2 and ended it with four successive maximums to top the 60-point mark once again. Chris Harris reached 10 plus 1 for the depleted Panthers, while Charles Wright, Matty Zagar, Max Frick and Tom Brennan were all in double figures for the rampant hosts. Our man Lee Wilde spoke with the latter of those after another breathtaking night for the Aces' rising star. Tom, outstanding evening for yourself once again. You really get some confidence here around the National Speedway Stadium. Yeah, as you say, obviously every uh, every uh, meeting now we sort of seem to build and build. So it's obviously great for me, and uh, obviously even even uh, better for the team. So, what's it like being a part of the team with such confidence? Yeah, it's great. I mean, obviously anyone that shows up here now obviously knows what we can do, and uh, these boys know how to ride a track, and uh, and and other guys that obviously prepare the track know 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 how to make a good good uh, good uh, race track. So for us, it's great, and uh, as you say, confidence is everything. And personally, you're hitting some great form just in time for the British final. You must be raring to go for that. Yeah, but I think, um, I think, um, as we said before, the um, the um, British final has a uh, has a uh, pretty big name on it. But for me, it's um, it's um, just a uh, a um, great experience to be a part of. And uh, for me to even be in the lineup is great. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll uh, definitely try our best and see what we can do. Well, Tom, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Cheers. In a moment, we'll get the frank latest thoughts of Peterborough team manager Rob Lyon. But first, here's Bellevue chief Mark Lemon again speaking with Lee Wilde. Mark, another huge victory for the Aces at home. You really are the farm team in the Premiership now. Well, it's, it's nice, but it's, when you see performances like that, and, um, you know, OK, Peterborough maybe being a little bit depleted, missing Michael Palmtoff and, um, you know, hands, but uh, our boys are really on fire around the National Speedway Stadium at the moment, um, and a real pleasure to work with them. Uh, but, you know, there's a long way to go yet. You know, playoffs obviously not too far away, but we need to keep this momentum up uh, coming into the playoffs. And uh, I, I don't see any reason why we can't. Great scoring from the 1-7. to seven. The strength in depth in this Aces side, that must give you confidence that you can take on almost anyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, Tom Brennan, you know, coming from the rising star and then going out there and, you know, getting a paid win in Heat 15, it's uh, a real feather in his cap. And uh, riding like a seasoned campaigner, to be quite honest. Um, but, yeah, we get young Norik Bladoon, you know, coming from, like, Germany and, uh, you know, really relatively unheard of. Uh, and once again, riding with, you know, you know, sort of maturity above, you know, his age um, and uh, much to be respected from, you know, the, the efforts, how they just, they, they just dig in and go about their sort of their business. So... You know, good crowd tonight, and obviously we've uh, been really fortunate with the weather. We've had, you know, inclement weather around us all day, and uh, we've managed to get the meeting on, which is fantastic. And it's such a confident side at the minute. Do you have to get them going, or do you have to restrain them a little bit? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's quite easy to manage at the moment. Um, I, I must admit, uh, there's some times when you've been a team manager, it's a little bit tough. But uh, when they're on a roll like that, it uh, makes my job very, very easy. Well, Mark, congratulations once again. Thank you. Cheers out there for your team can you run through what happened with us not really no um, hard to put into words to be honest uh, very very hard to get the boys motivated when you've got such a uh, broken team in some ways like you know guests and RR it's difficult but there you go that's the way it is Bellevue with a better team on the night and deserve to win but uh, it's a hard place to come in at best of times and um, they're on a bit of a roll here at the moment and if you look down their side it's uh, it's pretty impressive there was some positives to take. Chris Harris scored quite a few points towards the end. Benjamin Basso looked quick when he was out front. There must be something there that you can take. Not a, gr- not a great deal, no. Uh, I think, what do we get? Three race winners, two race winners. Tells its own story, really. Um, but that's the way it is. I still feel me on the playoffs, though, a chance to regroup in your next meeting. Yeah, look, playoffs are, are um, unlikely now. Um, we have to be honest, but... You know, you've you got to try and uh, to, to try and win meetings with with three, four riders is difficult, uh, and you can do it occasionally, but not on a consistent basis. And um, it's hard, but yeah, it's frustrating. But 
you know, the boys put the effort in. You can't fault them for that, but it um, wasn't to me. Rob, thank you very much. All right, no worries. So Ipswich and Sheffield were the only two teams not in action on Monday night, but they did meet last Thursday, and it was the hosts who ran out comfortable 54-36 winners at Foxhall. Jason Doyle roared to a 15-point maximum for the Witches, and Eric Chris, who has since picked up a leg and ankle injury, racked up 12-plus-1 at reserve as the home side produced a powerful second-half display, having been just two points ahead after eight races. It was another tough night on the road for Sheffield, who certainly appeared to miss Tobias Muschelak through injury but fixtures haven't exactly been regular for the Steel City side in recent times. That's something that's about to change though with a much busier August and September scheduled and skipper Kyle Howarth reckons regular racing will bring out the best of the Tigers once again. Ian grabbed a chat with him on his travels last week. Kyle Howarth, um, a tricky night at Foxhall this time out. Of course Sheffield did well there the first yeah. first time round but um, not so straightforward this time and uh, it was Good start though, fairly close to, to a point. Yeah, we ran them close for a while and then um, halfway through the meeting we kind of just faded, didn't we? And um, Jack had a, an engine problem in the lead and then that put him on to, to a straight 5-1. And um, Just a few little niggly problems towards the end cost us and um, they kind of pulled away then, didn't they? And, you know, the better team won on the night. Like I said, we wasn't doing too bad early on. We was controlling the meeting. There was two points in it at one point, wasn't there? And we was running close, and uh, we just faded away a bit. Ah, tough meeting, and um, obviously we struggled without Toby. Toby goes well there, as you've seen in the pairs a few weeks before. He had a really good uh, meeting there, didn't he? But um, that's just how it is. Uh, we have to regroup and go again. You've got um, a bit of a week or so off now with Sheffield, obviously not for you personally because you've got other meetings coming up, but for, for Sheffield. And then you've got two home meetings in the space of a week, haven't you, in the, in the start yeah. of August? Yeah, we've not really had the greatest run of, fo of uh, form of fixtures, if I'm honest you. We've kind of had like a meeting two weeks off, a meeting two weeks off, a meeting two weeks off, where August we've got about seven or eight meetings then for Sheffield. So we've got a good run of form. And I, I just don't think we've, we've not been riding every week and when we've been going good and catching form, then all of a sudden we've had a two or three week break and everyone's just getting back together. So now obviously coming into August, we're riding, at, I think we like ride once, 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 once a week, then twice, once again, twice. So we're kind of steady. So hopefully we can get the wheels going again and, and start pushing on. We're a solid team, we know what we can do. We've had a few blips, but at the end of the day, we're a good side and I believe in the lads and we can do a great job still. And you have still got some uh, matches in hand on the sides above you, so if you cash them in at home, it could really fire up the table pretty quick. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a few meetings at home in hand, haven't we? And, and I think at the end of the day, we're, we're still solid. We, we, started, we, we started the season strong and we know what we can do. That wasn't just on by accident or freak. We went everywhere and we won, didn't, didn't we? And we, we know we can do that again. We've just, like I said, we had a little blip at Bellevue and a blip there. Um, we had a win at home the other week. But that's just how it goes, and I think, if I'm honest with you, I'm not going to make excuses, but I just think that's where we haven't had a good run of, run of fixtures. But Because um, at the start of the season, we had a good run of fixtures, and we kept going and going. But now, like I said, coming into August, we're going into a good run of fixtures, so I believe we can get get back to where we started and, and uh, get some solid home and away wins. And, of course, the, the big thing this week is going to be the, the Speedway of Nations. Uh, as a Speedway fan, are you looking forward to that? Yeah, definitely. I think it's obviously um, a week where people tune in, don't they? It's a, it's a, a team event and it's your country. You always want to see your country do well, so hopefully they can do something. And your 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 boss at Sheffield, of course, is the, is the national boss yeah. too. So Yeah, definitely. I think um, Steady plays a good role in it and um, with Oli, um, obviously winning it last year. They don't want to. They, they don't want to come away with anything less, do they? They want to win it again, and um, I wish them all the best. Okay, thanks a lot, Carl. So let's finish off the Premiership roundup with a quick look at the current standings, where it remains very tight indeed between the top four. Ipswich are leading the way on 28 points, with Bellevue now just two points behind them on 26 in second. Wolverhampton aren't far behind either in third on 24 points, and all of the top three have raced 13 fixtures each. Sheffield currently occupy the final playoff place on 23 points, but as already mentioned, the Tigers do have a couple of meetings in hand on the three sides above them. Kings Lynn sit in fifth, 11 points off the playoffs as things stand, but again, they have two meetings in hand on the top three, and it's still reigning champions Peterborough who are bottom of the pile with just 10 points to their name. So that brings you up to speed with the latest in the top flight of British Speedway. So, Ian, it's back over to you.
Thanks to Ryan Guest for our Premiership Roundup this week on No Breaks, No Fear. And um, as has been mentioned, um, we are going to be heading into a bit of a a barren period, really, for the uh, Premiership for the time being. But it's going to get all going again in August. We have, of course, the British final on Monday, August the 1st, and Speedway of Nations this week. So it all takes a bit of a backseat. But it'll be back with a vengeance as we move through August, August the 4th, the next date for Premiership action as the Kingsland Star will host the Ipswich Witches 7.30 the start time there at the Adrian Flux Arena and the Sheffield Tigers hosting the Wolverhampton Wolves at 7.30 at Ollerton Stadium and then it's going to be a busy time through the course of August for all the teams really involved in Premiership action and we'll have a look back on those meetings next week here on No Breaks No Fear and we'll also be turning our attention I'm sure to the Speedway of Nations and the British final and those are two things that we are going to be previewing quite heavily over the uh, next uh, half hour or so here on No Breaks No Fear. We're joined by Great Britain Joint Team Manager Ollie Allen who will be looking ahead to this year's tournament in Voyons with the Speedway of Nations and looking back on that win last year because Ollie Allen not just a Great Britain team manager a gold medal winning British team manager along with Simon Stead after Great Britain brought home the Speedway of Nations trophy at the National Speedway Stadium but can they do it in Voyons? That's the question we'll be asking and all the detail and preview and look back on that winning moment from last year all on the way in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, Doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome back. Right now, we turn our attention to the Speedway of Nations and Great Britain. For the first time in a long time, over 30 years, start as world champions heading into the 2022 Speedway of Nations. The Lions will be taking on fellow 2021 finalists, Sweden and France, plus the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Italy and FIM SON newcomers Slovakia on night two of the four-day tournament. It's the first of the new era of FIM Speedway under new global promoter Discovery Sports events, with each nation selecting two starters at number one and two, as well well as number three as a reserve rider and for Great Britain that's going to be Ty Woffenden and Robert Lambert at one and two and Dan Bewley listed at number three we'll find out what that means in just a moment from uh, a man who's going to be deciding exactly where these riders may well be racing through the course of the tournament I'm delighted to say joining us is Great Britain joint team manager Ollie Allen and um, Ollie the build up to this of course has been a lot more intense for Great Britain perhaps with the fact that you've got these gold medals last year. We'll talk about that 2021 moment in, in, in just a bit, but uh, the clock counting down now and the moment of truth just around the corner. I, I, I suppose it's um, there's not so much expectation now. I, I, it's, that, that sounds funny, really, but because, we, because we've won it, kind of got the money, monkey off our back a little bit. Um, so I think, I think the, the riders feel really relaxed. Simon and I do. Everyone, you know, we've we prepared as well as we can. We've been preparing a long time for this, and um, there's been a few little, um, little bumps in the road, like change of track. So that meant changing hotels and changing travel plans and dinner reservations and things like that. But, but yeah, it's um, we've kind of t- we've taken those things in our stride. We've got a good team of people working behind the scenes. So, yeah, we, we're looking forward to to racing. And overall, now because of last year, you're arriving a much different place now aren't you it's an entirely different setup for you because maybe a few years ago any kind of medal would have been an achievement but as you say now you've been there and done it you've beaten Poland you've got the gold medals now you're the defending champions that's a place that that Great Britain haven't been in for quite some time yeah yeah it's been was it 32 years since we've been defending champions so it's um yeah, it's quite it's quite cool, really. It was um, it was amazing last year to, to get that gold medal, and I, you know I still look at the gold medal now and feel pretty um, 
amazed really that that I've got one. Um, obviously, Simon and I didn't, you know, we we didn't. Well, we 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 didn't ride the bikes, you know. We didn't do we we did the easy bit really. Um, the the riders are fantastic that weekend, and um, same bunch of guys this week. Um, so yeah, di- di- different. We're in a different place now. We're not we're not chasing something. It's um, but I wouldn't say we're defending it either. I, I don't. We won't ride with that attitude. You know, I, I don't. I think that's quite a negative attitude to ride with. So it's. You know everything's about about trying to win again and 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 looking, um, look, looking to get that gold. I know um, just the, the mindset that that the three boys have. Um, I I know I, I know Ty and Robert in particular. They you know anything other than gold, they will they will view that as a failure. Um, which you know if you want wind, wind back the top 12, 12 months, it probably wouldn't be, but. You know they they want to win. They want that they, they are winners. That's what they. That's why they race. Um, so, yeah, I, I not as much pressure um, as you know. I think last year, home turf hadn't won fit for ages. So I think it was sort of building a little bit. But this year, I think the boys they seem really relaxed. Simon and I feel good about everything. So no, I think that the sort of atmosphere is good. Take us back to last year um, before we get stuck into this year's tournament because. Um, it, it was over the the two legs, the final, of course, and and you have that that break in between. What was the mood like when you sat down and had dinner or team meeting or whatever after that that first part of of the final, and and how you were going to attack the second day because you were in second place at that moment, so you, you were far from out of it, but you had what ten points or whatever to catch up on Poland at that point at that halfway stage. So, what was the feeling there halfway through? You know, twenty four hours before you were little, did you know you'd be you're lifting that trophy? It's just funny evening, really looking back on it because the meeting had gone quite well. Like it was, you know, we we were happy with how the boys were riding. Obviously, we expected Poland to be strong, like they will be this year. Um, but you know. It, right at the end of the meeting to lose Woofie in, in a massive crash. And even though he, he hadn't, uh, the, you know, that, that, that first evening after the, the first night's racing, Ty hadn't said he wouldn't be fit to, you know, you know, he didn't say I'm not riding tomorrow, but you, you could just tell by the way he was walking around the hotel. I just thought, I looked at him and I thought you, you're probably not going to race tomorrow. So you had this kind of mixed feeling really of like, we've, we've done good, like so far, but, our captain's now injured badly. He's like, um, and that was a kind of a, a mixed feeling sort of thing because gutted he's injured, but actually really pleased he's not seriously, seriously hurt because it's a huge crash. So you're kind of like torn in feelings that way. Um, but the, the sort of the, the, good, the good thing and the relaxing thing was that Dan, Dan was ready. Like Dan was ready to ride. Like he, We'd prepared well. He was, you know, he'd he'd been with the team leading up to the up to the event. Um, so his reaction when Simon and I told him that you know you're probably going to ride tomorrow pleased us because it wasn't like one of shock or one of um, there was no nerves. It was just I remember I remember looking at him, looking at his reaction, and then looking to Simon and thinking we both sort of gave each other a nod as if to say you'll be all right. Like he, he just Dan was ready. Like he, he wanted to ride. I think some some guys would have immediately felt the pressure, and it would have been, it would have been like, oh, oh wow, you know, uh oh, I'm now going, I'm now being thrown in. Whereas with Dan Bewley, it was like, yep, bring it on, I'm, I'm ready. And there was no, there was no bravado, there was no sort of acting or anything. He, he, he meant it. So, um, that was reassuring for us. Yeah, and then uh, I, I suppose that that big meeting then where the real acid test for Dan you knew he was on his home track and and what he could do around there and of course sometimes it's you know what he's capable of and then actually delivering it but boy did he deliver that night and also of course not not least Tom Brennan contributing the the vital points as well from from reserve that, that he was there that night and so it all it all came good I mean and then to make it to the final what at what point did you realize actually this is on you know, this this actually is 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 doable now. Well, I remember there being a point in the second evening of racing where it was it was getting it was tightening up a little bit to get into the semi final, and there was a point where 
there's a couple of really important races and, and Simon and I were kind of looking at it. And once we, once we made it through them and once we got to the semi, I remember, because obviously with the, with, the, with the pairs format, you just don't want to come last. That's, you know, if you don't come last, you will win. When the riders pushed off for the, for the semi-final, Simon, um, Simon looked at me and he said, oh, what, you know, what do you think? Like, you know, away from everyone else, like, what do you, what do you think? I ch-? And he meant, well, you know, what do you think your chances are? And I remember saying to him, and, and it was just a feeling that I had, I, I just said, well, would, would you want to stop these two as they, as they rode off? And that's generally how, like, and I, I was sort of asking that as a rider, like, you know, if you're riding, would you want to stop Dan and Robert? Because I wouldn't, and not around Bellevue. Like, the, 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 there's so many lines, and the boys were riding well, and riding confident. I just, I just felt like we were going to do something. Like, I felt, re- I felt really confident about both races. And then the the final, of course, which was dramatic because not least with. Um... It was magic, wasn't it, that, that that hit the fence and all of a sudden in that moment, and bless him, you know, Nigel Pearson, one of his final commentaries, I think, that he did on, on the TV, but that moment where it all dawned on everyone that this is it. They, they really can't be caught now, surely. Yeah. Yeah, that was... It was a, it was a funny moment that like it's kind of happened in slow motion. I can sit picture it now. I can picture magic's like slowly going down. Who will be world champions? Will it be Poland? Will it be Great Britain? Here we go! And the tape says it's Smartik has got there, and now Janowski is going to try the outside run. Great Britain cannot afford to hold the inside. Janowski is coming round. Poland are looking good here, and now Smartik goes right. Janowski is coming off. Janowski is off. And now I kind of. I knew what that meant. Great Britain are going to be world champions! Great Britain are going to be world champions! And then I had to kind of double check that in my own mind. I was like, that, that, you know, that's true. That, that, that is, that means we've won. That's the Inoski is up! But Great Britain are going to be crowned champions of the world! But you, we, you, you couldn't really sort of celebrate until they crossed the line because, you know, if one of our boys had broken down or crashed, and the other thing was, Robert didn't know that that magic had gone down. So Robert's involved in this duel with with Smarslick, and they're both going at each other. Wow! Look at this as Lambert goes wide. Smarslick on the inside, but now Great Britain are two laps away from being world champions. I'm thinking, just stay away from Robert. Like, just just slow down. Um, but he didn't know. Um, obviously, only Dan was the only one that knew. Um, so yeah, it was, it was weird. It was a long, long three laps after magic went down. It just seemed to go forever. And then, um, yeah. And when they crossed the line, obviously it was, it was, everyone went mental. <laughs> Great Britain are world champions! Can you believe it? I've been saying it all weekend long. It doesn't matter what happens in the 42 heats. It's all about what happens in a one minute moment of a grand final. You know, lost control, lost the motorbike and Great Britain avoid that last place and Great Britain are world champions in the Monster Energy FIM Speedway of Nations And so how was your night after that? <laughs> heavy, heavy it was, it was, I bet Yeah, it was a good night We went um, BSI, the, the organisers of the you know, the previous organisers of Grand Prix and Speedway Nations and stuff, they put on kind of a private party. So we went there, um, yeah, and just stayed out, stayed out till late, as late as um, the old boys could manage. <laughs> well, you'd be looking for a repeat of that, I'm sure, um, this coming week. And obviously... I'm always, lo- I'm always looking for nights out like that. But... <laughs> and, you know, and the, and the gold medal, but yeah, I'm always looking for nights out like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Why? Why wouldn't you? Um, the the venue, as you mentioned earlier, has changed. Volumes, but a track that I think most of the riders will have ridden at some point. Um, it's it's hosted. I think is this his first Speedway of Nations as such, but it's been used on the GP circuit and World Cups, and um, it's a you know a well known a well known circuit. And of course, um, Ollie Olsen originally was the the, the designer, the curator here, and. Um, how does this stack up with tracks that, that our boys would be used to? Because clearly Woofy was racing at Esberg as his his home track there, so that that little bit of a home track knowledge is, is out the window. But I say Voyans, it's not it's not as 
a, a, um, a surprise track and uh, one that they'll be all riding for the first time. Although maybe is Dan Bewley fairly new to it? Um, Dan's not ridden there before. The other two have. Um, like you say, the, the Boyens has held some big meetings over the years. You know, always, they nearly always have a Grand Prix there, and they've had World Cups there. And I remember seeing Ty in the World Cup there a few years ago, just smoke everyone. Um, so he can certainly do well there. I, I actually think the move from I think I think uh, Voyens is more of a uh, say it, it, it's more like a British league track than Esberg. I think Esberg was a bit more continental, bigger corners, bit more room on it. So I think that possibly favoured everyone else. I think the, I think I think Voyens helps us. Um, you, you, we need to be gating. They, the, the boys need to be gating well. Overtaking is not easy around there, but but there's, the shape of the track certainly suits you. Kind of British league P- people who've done British league. I think it helps them. So um, I mean, Smarzik, you know, he rides everywhere. You know, you could take him to. I was going to say Lakeside, but it's not there anymore. Like, you know, you, you you could take him to Wolverhampton and he'd be fine. You know, it, it doesn't matter. But I, I do think it it. it it does favour us more than Esberg. So, yeah, look, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't when when it was announced that the venue had changed. As a manager, you're obviously waiting for waiting to see or hear riders' reactions, and because that gives you a kind of a feeling as to what they're thinking. And 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 they they couldn't have cared less. They you know they just just take it as a just a. I think it's a little diversion on the way to the goal that they want to get to. They don't really care. We know, obviously, the the quality up to now of, of Ty Wolfenden and, and Robert Lambert. Dan Bewley bursting onto the, the Grand Prix scene and went into that um, series with no expectations on his shoulders, really, uh, because he was uh, the first reserve. But I don't think anybody was really expecting him and w- he would be completely forgiven for you know, not performing uh, in... in uh, on that highest level, but he's done exactly the opposite and he's fighting for um, semi-finals. He's come very close to his first final and now in the last couple of weeks breaking track records around Legno, even despite that massive crash, he really seems to have kicked on to that next level, if not the level beyond that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think Dan's announced himself on the international scene this year. I think he's he's sort of come of age a little bit. I think... He, I know he's happy with his Grand Prix form. Um, he always wants more. He's an ambitious kid, like he wants to do better. But he, you know, he's clever enough to realise he's done well. Um, I think if you look at the whole squad, I think Dan, he's he's riding better than he ever has. I think Robert has taken it uh, one step higher. You know, like on his goal to being world champion. I think he's he's climbing the ladder a little bit, step by step, and I think. He's made Grand Prix final now, and I don't think it's long before we see Robert win a final or win a Grand Prix. Um, and I think Ty would say, I mean, he's, I think, I think is he fifth in the Grand Prix stand, standing, something like that. I think it's which is higher than he higher than he was last year. I think so. I, I don't think Ty's not riding. Um, the best he ever has. I I wouldn't say he's not right. I'd say his results aren't as good as they've they've been uh, in the past. But you know, he he's still Ty Wolfman and he's still three times world champion. He's the most successful British rider ever, and um, and he'll he'll lead the team and he he deals with pressure better than you know, I think anyone in the world. I think he's like a I think mentally he's really really strong. Um, I know he's desperate to get back-to-back gold medals. So, yeah, I've, I've every confidence in him. And I, I know at Lesno last weekend, he, I know Dan got the track record, but but Ty scored a load of points, maybe like 13 out of 15 or something like that. So he's, he's on good form at the moment. And, you know, I've spoken to him probably every other day for the last week. And I know he feels feels relaxed. He feels, you know, he's looking forward to things. So, you know, I, I'm... I'm pleased with where all three riders are at the moment. I know in an interview in the Speedway Star last week, Steady was saying perhaps the biggest um, decision to be made was how you operate that number three, you know, because that's a rider you can bring in at any point and it's sort of your, your trump card as such. And what's the, the thought process been around that? 
we you know we we look at the two meetings as well we look at the week as as two meetings you know we we our goal is to to try and win so we we see ourselves competing in the two matches so what i think is really important um is that in that first in the semi final that the third rider rides you know i think it's important we use them um so that we can see who's riding best not only not only we can can we see who's riding the best for the final, but also just gives them track time. It gives them, you know, an opportunity to get some laps in in case we have to use them. And it's it's very likely that we will. Um, and we're we're in a fortunate position where we've got three really strong riders. And I I think, um, I we will pick our strongest team, what we think is best for the day. But I think I also think if you threw three names, threw the three names up in the in the air and, and picked the two that landed closest to each other, you wouldn't. That probably wouldn't be far off the same result. I think they're they're all good team riders. So, yeah, I I, I think like you say, it's important that third the the third rider is important, and I think we how we use him is it will be will be key. Um, and I think it's important they get out on the track for me quite early i think is 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 better and originally it's a squad of five how um do you manage the the, the full squad then will will they be with you we've got adam ellis and, and tom brennan of course also involved will they be traveling as part of the party and, and involved with the with the guys and, and supporting them in the pits well tom will be there because he's got he'll be the invoice that week because he's got speed donations two on the friday so adam won't travel um tom will be there um the the, rea- the reality is, it's very very unlikely that the fit like a fifth rider would be needed. Um, you know, you you don't like to talk about worst case scenarios, but if if something happens to someone on the first night, then Tom's there and he comes in as your third rider for the for the second night. The likelihood of needing two are slim, and and it, and if you did, then we'd get Adam out there, no problem. You've got time to do it. Um, so yeah, Tom is kind of our our fourth rider really that week because he's already there just logistically and uh, it, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's the, that's the kind of emergency plan, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And fingers crossed uh, you don't have to uh, make it, make it down that, mm. <laughs> that route again, but uh, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't want to go down that road again. Um, looking at the opposition, obviously Poland are going to be strong. We know that. And um uh, they've got sort of an embarrassment of riches, but you can pretty much bank on Magic and, and Schmarschlik being their main two. And then they've got a choice of, of Dudek, Kubera or Kolodze as their their third wheel. Looking at the other teams, though, beyond Poland, um, maybe Australia, Denmark, would they be your your biggest rivals, do you think, when it comes down, you know, hoping, of course, that Great Britain make it through the semi-finals, But when you get to the final now... Clearly, that they they'll be the other major teams, along with perhaps you know Sweden, that you'd be concentrating on and looking out for. Yeah, I think um, Denmark will be strong. Um, host nation, you can you can bet that they've been on that track. That you know in the in the last couple of weeks, as soon as Boyens was announced, I would imagine they've been on there. I, I don't know that, but I would imagine. Um, and they. The Danish riders ride well in Denmark. You know, they're the, they're the track conditions. They're you know they're 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 used to riding on those kind of like sort of slick flat tracks, and um, they'll be strong definitely. And and if you look at Denmark right now, they've got three top riders, haven't they? They've got three really really top riders at the moment. So uh, you know, I think that other than Poland, Denmark stand out for me. Um, I think. Australia can be good, you know. Doily, Doily can still turn it on against the best, and then you've got obviously Max and Jack, who are both again like world class performers. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be be a tough meeting, won't it? It'll be. Um, I think I, I think gating's going to be really important, and I think um, team riding will be key. And I think that, that's one area where I, you know, have a hundred percent faith in in the Great Britain team. I think we've got. I think Ty. Is probably the the best team rider in the world, I think. Um, and Robert is very, very aware of where riders are as well. So I think, I think that's good. That helps us. Um, they did. Ty did some great team riding at Bellevue, and um, before he got injured. So, yeah, I, I hope to see more of that. And I, it's going to be, you know, to, to win, 
to win it again will be really, really hard. But we, I believe in the riders we've got. Um, they believe in themselves. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I know that one or two Danish riders were asked to attend a, a Danish training session midweek a couple of weeks ago. Um, I believe at Voyens uh, by Hans Nielsen. So uh, <laughs> make of that what you will. There you go then. So there, so there was a training session then. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. Knew it. Yeah, the Danes always well prepared, but you knew that. Um, for Great Britain, though, semi final two is happening on Thursday. The lineup, and this is the draw order Czech Republic, Great Britain, France, Sweden. Italy, Slovakia and Slovenia. And uh, among those, uh, some well-known names to uh, British Speedway, not least uh, Sweden with uh, Freddie Lindgren, uh, France with Dimitri Berger and uh, David Balego, and Italy, who are led by Paco Castagna. He's captaining the Italian side at Voyens, and uh, I caught up with the Pac-Man at Leicester. Uh, a week or so ago, and uh, here's his thoughts on the Speedway of Nations. Yeah, it's uh, surely one of the meetings that you always look up to every year, and uh, there's uh, there's a lot of pressure now, obviously, uh, uh, logistically-wise as well, because now it's been moved, so we're trying to fix everything and uh, and try to to get there with, uh, you know, the right equipment, and it's that kind of meeting where you want to, you know, do good and, uh, and push for a good result, and... Uh, I'm looking forward to doing that, and uh, Voyance is a speedy track that I always wanted to to try. So, yeah, the perfect occasion to go there and uh, make a good result and, uh, and try to take uh, some points home from day for the Italian team. That's uh, surely one of the uh, the main things. But I don't know. I just go there, try to enjoy racing, enjoying the whole, embrace the the, the moment, and uh, just racing a meeting with the best guys in the world and enjoy it because uh, I've always put a lot of pressure on myself uh, even when we were at Bellevue or, or lunch shoot or other meetings you know lots of pressure to do well and, and show my capabilities but there's no point of doing that you know I just need to enjoy riding the bike like I've been doing this year in the UK and uh, and hopefully the result will come if not we just embrace the moment that's that's all we, we're here for. Yeah, the Italy captain, Paco Castagna, who will be uh, facing uh, the Great Britain side of Ty Wolfenden, Robert Lambert and Dan Bewley at Voyens uh, on Thursday. That's the 28th of July in uh, semi-final two at the Speedway of Nations. And then, of course, it continues over the course of the weekend uh, with the final. And another event taking place, of course, is uh, Speedway of Nations 2, which is the under-21 version of that. We'll touch on that and we'll look ahead to the British final in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, coming up in just a sec. No Breaks, No Fear, the official British Speedway podcast. Welcome back, I'm Ian Brannan. Our special guest this week is Great Britain Joint Team Manager Ollie Allen. We're going to hear from Tom Brennan in a second. Uh, Now, Tom Brennan, of course, as you've already mentioned, Ollie is part of the Speedway of Nations squad the full squad he, he's rider number four and should one of our top three riders uh, find themselves uh, in the unfortunate position of having to withdraw for whatever reason then Tom will be the the first one to to get the nod and that's because he's already uh, in Voyance because he will be uh, having a starring role in SON2 which is the under 21 world team championship of course which uh, Great Britain will be represented by um, what is our lineup there what is the situation with SON2 um, you've got Tom Brennan, Drew Kemp, and Leon Flynn. I think that's the the way the way the right. Well, no, that's the way the riders are lined up. So one, two, and three like that. Um, yeah, I think that I'm looking forward to seeing the young boys there. I'm looking, you know, I'm looking forward to. I don't get to go to as many under twenty one events as I'd like. I go to some, but not them all. Um, Neil Vatcher tends to be well. He he leads the way with that. Um, but I'll be at the track on the Friday night to help them. Yeah, I'll be I'll be there for practice as well. Um, so yeah, I, I I think I think those boys will. Um, I think it'd be good for them. It'd be a, be a big big learning experience. And um, again, I think I think Esbo. Uh, sorry, I think Voyans definitely suits Tom and Drew um, more than than Esberg will. Um, I think I think da- um, Leon probably would favour Esberg, but yeah, I, I think. Um, Leon's had a really good year this year. He's he's kind of stepped up a notch. Um, 
So I've been really, really pleased to see him do that. Tom's carrying on where he left off last year. Uh, Drew's been inconsistent, um, unfortunately. I, I, th- I think, I think a lot of Drew. I think he's a, you know, I see a lot of talent there. He just, he just needs to kind of piece things together. Really, I think there's a, there's a couple of pieces of the jigsaw that aren't quite where they should be at the moment, but. I think he can get there. He's determined, you know. He's still only young, so I think, yeah, it's. Um, I think it'll be a good meeting for them. There's plenty to learn. Yeah, and it's all good. Um, all good experience for the future as well, isn't it? And if they continue their progression in the sport, then when the time comes, you know, to be in. I mean, Tom is in the the, the squad and could potentially find himself in action in the in in the main event. But when when that time eventually comes, then it's all it's all good stuff to have up your sleeve and all good experience, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's important the riders get that that international experience as they get you know get as much of it as early on as they can. Um, Yes, it's, it's it's good it's good for their development, and and it's good for you know maybe future meetings where you might want to use them. You know, like we, I think next year we go back to the World Cup, so five man teams. So you know we can't rely on those top three anymore. We've got to start going down the order a little bit. So we want people like Tom to step up and make himself or put himself in the shop window for those. Let's hear from Tom Brennan now. Uh, This is an interview um, recorded with Phil Lanning uh, a week or so ago, and this was before the news came out about uh, Tom landing a spot in SGP2 in Cardiff. He's got the wild card for the British round of SGP2, so I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to heading down to uh, the Principality Stadium to cheer Tom on on the Sunday. Uh, But here he is talking about the Speedway of Nations, and, of course, last year Tom... A gold medal winner. He was our our reserve through the course of that tournament and uh, has the gold medal, and I know he's very proud of that. Um, but uh, here he's talking with Phil about heading to Voyans, and whilst he might be uh, necessarily fe- featuring in the, the main event of the Speedway of Nations, he will be in SON2, and uh, the experience of last year surely sets him in good stead. Here he is with Phil Lanning. Yeah, as you say, some obviously massive, massive meetings coming up for me. I mean, being a, being a part of the, um, the Australian Nations setup again will be absolutely fantastic. I mean, those are, those are memories from last year have definitely stuck in my mind, and they, and they, they haven't gone yet. So uh, for me to be a part of that and kind of to, to, to sort of see how those guys work, kind of, kind of learn, learn sort of the tips and kind of tricks that they do is, uh, is, um, is a something you can't buy. So uh, for me, it's fantastic to be part of that. Um, whether I get a chance or not is obviously a different story. But even to be in that, in that, in that uh, squad sort of shows are making those little steps up. So uh, yeah, we obviously also have the uh, the um, the um, British final, which is obviously fantastic. That's that's sort of one of my, one of my main goals for sort of the start of the year. So for me, that that's uh, that's the sort of one event that I remember going to since I was about four years old. So uh, for me, it's fantastic, and hopefully I can go for a good show. And the difference in you as a rider compared to where you were last October is remarkable, really. That you're um, obviously you've gone up into the team at Bellevue. You've just scored double figures at, on on Monday, and then you've, you're scoring double figures regularly for Glasgow. So you can see what Great Britain does to you. You can see yeah. the progress that has done. And also, you, you could probably date it back to the the bid gosh last year when you rode for Great Britain, when you got yeah. 20 points. That was the, the catalyst almost. So yeah. do you feel like you're a different rider now because of Great Britain? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, those guys obviously work just as hard as I do. If Well, obviously, way way harder than what I do. I mean, obviously, we all, they're, they're sort of always looking for like the best they can. And uh, for me, to sort of be a part of that to sort of be a part of a um a um a um, winning team again will be fantastic but uh yeah i mean obviously since uh since the last year we obviously have uh have made those little steps up and for me we always we always want to try and make little sort of baby steps you know so we never want to go too far too soon but we also want to keep keep, keep on pushing ourselves so uh yeah it's been it's been going well so. and obviously you have a um a bit of a secret weapon that it's not a, so much of a secret but it might not be um, the, the Speedway public not, might not be aware of it, but your family behind you, the, the Cummings family, yeah. you have Craig Cummings, uh, who was the brains behind Billy Hamill in, in his World Championship win in 96. You, you, Kyle is your mechanic, who's yeah. the Kyle Cummings, and your girlfriend Kristen, Kristen yeah. is your social media and, yeah. and PR person. So that seems to be the driving force, and Craig knows everything yeah. about this sport. So you must feel like you've got everything right 
back in the team, so it's up to you now, yeah, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we obviously work, we obviously work really, really hard, and obviously Craig, Craig definitely pushes everything to the limit. I mean, every, everything with Craig. I mean, I could, I would never be able to thank him enough for, for, for obviously what he's done already, let alone sort of, sort of like what's to come. So, uh, and obviously with them, with them, Kyle obviously on board. Kyle's started last year for the first time, and the difference in him in a year is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's been he's been a massive kind of change for me. He he, he actually comes everywhere with me. So whether we go to Poland, whether we go to Team GB, whether we're at Glasgow or Bellevue, he's he's. He's everywhere with me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Kristen is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, I, I could talk, I'd probably talk about it all day, but uh, mm -hmm. no, I mean, for me, it's obviously I am, I am, I am great, great a team obviously around me, and uh, and obviously couldn't, uh, couldn't wish for much more. So, That's brilliant. well, listen, we wish all the rest of the boys in the British final. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, Tom Brennan, and I'm sure the whole country will be behind Tom, um, especially at SGP2 uh, at uh, Cardiff, which uh, is going to be on the Sunday, 1 o'clock for that one. Uh, you don't have to buy an extra ticket. If you've got your ticket for Cardiff, you've got your ticket for SGP2, you just turn up again the next day for an extra meeting, and Tom Brennan will be our British wildcard representative and some other well-known riders, um, certainly from British Speedway. Ben Basso, I think, is involved in that. Um, also, Jonas Knudsen, uh, he's going to be in it as well from Berwick and some other real exciting upcoming talent. Um, so get yourself down there and support Tom uh, at the very least. Um, just talk about the, your relationship, Ollie, with, with Steady, because obviously it's a, a relationship that goes way back to uh, the Peterborough Thundercats days, I believe, if not before. And you came through the, the British youth system at the time with Steady. You've spent a lot of time together and now your joint team managers, which is a little bit, I don't say unique, but it's different from the majority, isn't it, where you just have one person who's the, the be-all and end-all. You share the workload. Um, you don't go to every meeting together. Sometimes you'll be on duty, other times Steady will be on duty, but for the big stuff like Speedway of Nations, of course, you're both there. How does it all work out when you're both in charge of the uh, of the situation and um, and who does what? What's what's the what's the dynamic? Well, we... Um... We we sit down the we'll sit down the night before and and just plan out. You know, we've got a list of things we'll need to do throughout the day, um, whether it be kind of media stuff or um, I don't know, checking that the boys have got the right suits and covers and stickers and all the rest of it. And there's um, the, the, you know, I don't know, looking after the itinerary for the boys. You know, the licenses and signing ons and stuff like that. So we kind of give each other. We we just split it. Um, and and then during the meeting, Simon will. Well, I, I don't know which way around it'll be. I would imagine Simon will deal probably more directly with the riders. And and I in Bellevue, I tended to watch every race, and just just kind of kept my eye on the track and changing track conditions. And I and I kept a close eye on the program really. And Simon just Simon kind of has a good relationship with the boys in the pits, so he would be kind of in and around the pit bays the whole night. That's kind of how we did it there. So I'd imagine it will be similar. I'd imagine we'll do something like that. The, the, the two manager thing, um, I wouldn't say I, we weren't criticised for it when it first started, but there were there were people going, "Oh, I don't know if that'll work." It's actually worked really well because we haven't had a disagreement about anything. We've you know every decision we've made we've made together. There's been no no clashes there, and it allows us to split our workload a little bit. We both lead busy lives, and you know we both got young kids and we're our own businesses, so. It's, uh, it's a bit of a juggling act, but with the two of us, we can kind of split you know, like, like split the events. Like you said earlier, I um, we we don't do every event together. So I'll do like this weekend. I'm oh sorry, the weekend just gone. I was in France um, for a European pairs event. Um, Simon's not there, but he he did one a couple of weeks ago. So we we, we just we share it out like that, and yeah, it keeps us keeps us sane. It's an extra pair of eyes though, isn't it? Because as you say, it, it, you can lose track and so many riders say, you know, after meetings when, you've, when we've interviewed them, you know, on BSN or wherever, they'll say, I I've got no idea what the score was. I've got no idea um, what happened in that heat. I didn't see it. So to have someone who's able to just to stand on the terrace there and, and keep an eye on everything, you know, it gives you a great appreciation of where you're at in the meeting. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and, and by by one of us staying sort of trackside the whole time, it does allow you to keep an eye on things. It is an extra set of eyes and ears, and I I think that's that's beneficial. I, I do. Um, I I mean, I would do it on my own, but I wouldn't choose to. I, I like doing it with Simon. I'm happy with that kind of dynamic, and yeah. Um, if you chip in a little bit more with the paperwork, that'd be nice. But 
<laughs> I'll tell him that when we have a beer. <laughs> Let's turn our attention to the British final. Sports Insure British Final Championship on the 1st of August. In a moment, we'll hear from the defending champion, Adam Ellis. But the full lineup is as follows. Dan Bewley, which, uh, of course, is uh, maybe the, the, the headline news. These, these are not in riding order, by the way. This is just uh, the names. Uh, Adam Ellis, Chris Harris, Danny King, Richard Lawson, Steve Worrell, Craig Cook, Kyle Howarth, Charles Wright, Richie Worrell, Lewis Kerr, Scott Nichols, Paul Stark, Ben Barker, Leon Flint and Tom Brennan with reserves, Danian Hume and Connor Mountain. Always a highlight of the year, of course, the ultimate prize of a trip to Cardiff to be the wild card in the British Grand Prix, which is just around the corner as well. So it's really set up perfectly for a great night of racing and potentially a life-changing experience for someone. Yeah, definitely. Um it's always, you know, always a massive meeting in the British final, and and I'm really pleased that Dan's doing it this year. Um, I think it'll be, um, I mean, every meeting at Bellevue is good, isn't it? Doesn't, you know, doesn't matter if it's National League, it's a, the racing's good. So I'm looking forward to seeing it, and it's good, like you say, it's good for those riders to put themselves in the shop window. It's good for your, you know, your people like Richie Worrells and and guys like that that maybe don't feature too much for us. But then, you know, if they go out and beat Dan Bewley, then we stand up and take notice, don't we? So, um. Yeah, I, I think it will be be good, and I, I think Chris Harris will be one to look for there. I think he's riding really well at the moment. He's probably riding the best he has for, you know, probably five or six years, I would say. So um, really, really chuffed for him. Such a good guy, like such a good role model for the young British riders. Um, so I, I really hope he has a good result. Um, and if I, you know, I, I have to I have to try and stay kind of um, on the fence as be, being I can't have favourites. But if I were to, you know, if someone were to win the British final and get the wild card, I'd love it to be Bomber. Um, I think it'd be uh, I think it'd be I think the fans in Cardiff would go mental if Bomber was the was the wild card. Um, so so yeah, I, that's that's what I'd like to see. But that's, maybe it's just because one of the, he's you know he's he's my era, isn't he? So. I grew up with him. But I think the thing with Bomber and we've 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 commentated on races with him this this year and he's yeah. he's not so much Bomber anymore. He, I mean he's still Don't he's say still, it. He's, a gator. He's, he's a gator now. He's still Bomber <laughs> when he needs to be, but yeah, he's really managing to get out of the traps quick and getting the job done by the first bend and this is not what we've been used to. Yeah. No, not what we're used to, not what we like, but but it's it's good for him, you know. At, at his age, I he probably doesn't want to be scraping around the fence and dive bombing people. You know, he, if he can make the start and win that way, it's much better for him. Uh, maybe not for the fans, but yeah, he's like you say, he's been gating a lot better. We've seen it, haven't we, when we've been commentating? Um, and he shocked he shocked me seven times at pool in one <laughs> night. Um, but but yeah, uh, you know, if he pulls off a few of those at Bellevue and then a few of those at Cardiff, he'll be laughing. For, for somebody like Bomber, who's obviously represented Great Britain for for a number of years. Is he still you know, on on your radar there with these performances? He is putting the you know fairly big points away, and and yeah. of course, as you say, you know next year World Cup, you've got a yeah. five man squad. Um, you know, he's still he's he's still there on the radar. Yeah, you you know you'd have to say at the moment if if the World Cup was this week, if it was World Cup and it's a five you know five senior riders, is he in that top five? Yes, he is. Um, no doubt. So. So yeah, he's um, he's done really well, and he he's done a, done a few events for us over the last two years. He, he rode in France a couple of days ago, um, and whenever you ask him to ride for Great Britain, it's just no problem. Like just you know, the, it literally the, the conversation goes for me to him, Bomber. Do you want to race in? Do you want to race in Hungary in in a month's time? And I get back. Yeah, um, send me the address of the track and the, the date and I'll be there. And that's literally it. Like, nothing else. It's not like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> You'd be surprised some of the questions I get asked. But Bombers is just like, yeah, I'm there. See you there. And um, sometimes I have to check with him sort of two weeks before, or like maybe on the week before. I'm like, are you still going to Hungary? Because I heard anything from you. And it's like, yeah, 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 I'm there. You know, everything's booked. Ferry's booked. You know, it's just better. But that's that's you know, that's what 20 years of top level speedway gives you, isn't it? He's got that experience. He knows how to organize everything. He's, you know, he's not a young kid that you've got to look after. He just turns up, does his job, tries his hardest, goes home. 
and ready and then just re- repeats the same thing the next day if you can um yeah great 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 role model for the young guys yeah, as a lot of people would love to see Bomber get that um, wild card, but of course, he's got quite a lot of competition for that. And uh, not least, the le- rest of the entire lineup of the uh, of the British final. But um, Adam Ellis is the defending champion. Of course, he won last season, and uh, it's not lost on him that he uh, didn't claim that. Uh, Cardiff wild card in 2021 so that's something he's looking to put right he's been chatting about uh, life as the current British champion with Ryan Guest well Adam Ellis uh, British final just uh, just around the corner now obviously a uh, reigning champion and the aim is to uh, win it back to back now yeah of course um, after winning it once you you know you can do it so um, definitely planning on going there and, and trying to retain the title it's going to be a tough one but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Extra motivation for yourself, obviously. Uh, no, with no uh, Cardiff last year, British Grand Prix at the Principality Stadium, missed out on that wild card opportunity. So that that must be an extra motivation. It is. Yeah, that was a bit of a kick in the teeth, but um, you know, the, you, I was I was pretty happy just to have won it. To be honest, the, the Cardiff riding in Cardiff is just uh, an extra bonus. But um, yeah, it would be it would be great to to win it again this year and uh, get to Cardiff as well. So fingers crossed it it goes to plan. It's going to be a tough lineup. Didn't have a very good meeting there last time I was there. So I'm um, going to have to change some things before we go back. Yeah, like you say, uh, you had two two main goals you've revealed now at the start of the season. One was to get to the the, the European Championships, uh, have ticked that off and are in those. And and this was the second one, wasn't it? Yeah, so I'm really happy with the European Championships. Got a little bit lucky with with the late call up for the challenge, but yeah, there's like big tick off off that that list, and uh, obviously just a British Championship to go. Dan's obviously not won it yet, so he's going to be fired up for it, and he's flying this year. So um, and there's so other guys like Wrighty and and Bomber. So it's not going to be an easy one, but. Uh, they never really are, so hopefully, um, hopefully, we can get the job done again. Yeah, like you say, Dan as well. He, he had the pressure and expectation last year because he was a Bellevue rider. Do you think not being a, a Bellevue home rider this year might help him a little bit? Uh, I don't know if it would change much. To be honest, he's you know pretty pretty down to earth guy. We could, if we'd have run that final probably five times, he might have won it three or four times. So. Um, it's just it's tough you know when it's a one-off final you can have a really good night all night and um and then lose it in the last race which is a, a kick in the teeth but it's you know it's builds makes makes it special so um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be hard but need to f- just focus on we got a few meetings to go before then and uh try and find something that's working good uh, for for the British final yeah as you touched upon as well obviously it was a, a tough night the other Monday when you were there with uh, with Sheffield in the Premiership obviously different opposition but nevertheless certainly need a, an improvement on that one yeah definitely we pretty much run the same setup we always run there and it seems to work good but it just wasn't happening and tried tweaking changing some small things and felt like I was making good starts and riding well but just didn't have the speed so um, yeah we're trying to figure something out really we got we got a few meetings over here before the British final, and uh, we want to try and find some speed before before that because probably the biggest meeting of the year in the UK. So um, yeah, we want to be uh, want to be competitive and definitely weren't last time I was there. Yeah, you've talked about how it's the, the biggest meeting in the UK on the British Speedway calendar because of everything it means. Where whenever you look back on your career at years and decades down the line, it'll always be uh, an achievement you're proud of, but uh, not too many riders have been able to win it back-to-back and, and won it multiple times, so that that, that would uh, be something you, you can be super proud of looking back. It would be, but um, you know, it's, it's not going to be an easy task. Uh, they, it never really is. There's always a few surprises in there I'm pretty sure most people weren't expecting me to, to win it last year so um, it's going to be a tough one obviously you know it's, it's a, a British title it's a big thing for, for any British rider to win and um, pretty, ex- pretty excited to, to be heading back there in a few weeks and uh, you know just fingers crossed we, we get some get some find some speed before we before then the reigning British champion, Adam Ellis, at least until Monday, the 1st of August. And, um, well, you know, he goes into this meeting uh, from a different point of view to 12 months ago, doesn't he, Ollie? Because 
He knows he can do it. He's been there. He's done it. And actually, he beat Dan Bewley uh, on, on that night when he won it last year as well. And, and so, really, obviously, the bit between his teeth and uh, looking to uh, t- to add to his British Championship collection. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, Adam's a, such a talented rider. Um, you know, it's one of you know, Simon and I's job, really, is to try and unlock that a little bit. I think he's... Um, I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. I, th- I think he did really well to qualify for the um, European Championship this year. I think that's. I do think that's the level he belongs. I think that's where, like right now, like I, I, I do do believe he should be in that field. I think he's good enough. Um, so I hope he shows that in the last few rounds. Um, I think with Adam, it's just a case of he just needs a bit more consistency, and, and Simon and I would like that from him. So he. He needs to work out what that is and and try and improve that. But he, you know, such a good rider. Like he showed that in the in the British final. Like he's he, he's so good when he's on. Um, so you know, you can put it. You know, if he makes a start in the final, I, I don't see Dan getting him. I think you don't see many people pass Adam. As a as a rider, uh, you know, where where in the you know the the, the list of of achievements does the British Championship sit? You know, for a British rider, you've you've been in this. Uh, this meeting, you, you know, when Cardiff has been a, a wild card option as well, and you know how how exciting and how how much of a priority is it for a for a rider in your in your busy calendar? Yeah, it's big. It's um, it well, with the way the speedway calendar works, you, you probably don't give it too much thought until maybe the week before. You know, it's there, it's lingering in the background, but you know, you've got you you've often you've got a sort of you've got to tick off a lot more meetings before you get there. So, but when when I uh, Speaking from experience, every time I rode in, in a British final, you the day feels different. It feels like a special occasion. So, you know, you're a little bit more nervous, a little bit more excited. So I think it brings out the best in a lot of riders. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, it's a yeah, massive meeting. Um, and and one that if you win it, then you'll, you'll, you'll never forget that. You know, you'll forever be a British champion and can't take that away. Well, we've had one British champion crowned over the last week already. Leon Flint has become the British under-19 champion with a faultless 15-point maximum at Redcar. The Berwick and Wolverhampton youngster was one of two unbeaten riders going into the final round of races and uh, defeated Bellevue Colts racer Jake Mulford in the crucial Heat 19. Mulford finished an impressive second whilst there was high drama over the final podium place with Harry McGurk, Sam Hagen and Nathan Ablett all finishing on 11 points. Uh, McGurk appeared an unlikely starter for the runoff after clashing with Ablett on the last lap of Heat 17 and suffering an ankle injury, but he not only took his place, but he won the race as well from the back with Ablett eventually falling on the third lap. But uh, Leon Flint was the eventual winner of the night and uh, he caught up with Dave Rowe after that uh, very busy evening for him in Redcar. Leon Flint, congratulations. I know you've been trying to win this for a number of years. You've finally done it. It must feel good. Yeah, I um, had a few cracks at it. Yeah, it was just nice to finally not have it at Scunthorpe. <laughs> Bit of a bogey track of mine. But yeah, I showed my class tonight and um, yeah, it wasn't easy by no means. Uh, Jake, Jake. You know, was on a max as well, so it was the last heat decider. But you know, I won't lie, I was a bit nervous going into it. Um, a lot of pressure on us. Um, made me putting on myself, just believing that I, I should win it. But uh, yeah, happy to come away with the result, and um, yeah, hopefully, big steps forward. Do you listen to people talking about saying you were the, the clear favourite? I mean, clear favourites still have to go and win it, and 15 point maximum probably shows that you justified that tag. But as you say, what well, it wasn't easy. No, it's it's not easy. Um, you know, from the outside people, you know, they just uh, just expect you to go and do it um, from the form that you're on. Um, but it puts a lot of pressure on you um, from hearing other people say that because uh, I, it's just uh, you know, like I say, I won't lie, I'm quite nervous for that last one. But you know, I just kept cool and uh, rode four safe laps and didn't do anything stupid throughout the whole night that's the thing with these the way the structure is in this meeting um you know if you have one bad one bad ride or one mechanical fault that's you basically done if you want to win so boys made sure everything was uh, proper on the bikes um and yeah just just did my thing and were there any injury concerns because you had that uh, big crash at glasgow last weekend so you've not ridden since then was everything okay with that yeah i was a bit stiff the couple of first races um I kind of just loosened up after that. Uh, 
but luckily it's quite a nice round track so you know I wasn't having to pull mad shapes on it but yeah it, it's all right I can still feel it but oh, there's a lot I'm sure there's a lot a lot of other riders riding with worse injuries than this so I won't worry about it. <laughs> a big national title now under your belt the under 21 is to come later in the season at Birmingham the, the main British final the, the senior British final is at Bellevue a week on Monday so that's another little target for you I suppose. Yeah like I said you know that kind of line up um, all it takes is to get to the semis and then if you make the semis all it takes to get to the final and then it's anyone's game um, but yeah no pressure on me going into that I'll just go out and uh, try and upset a few people thanks Liam making our races well done thank you cheers buddy thank you yeah, the new under-19 champion, Leon Flint there, and uh, finally getting his name on that trophy in 2022. Let's have a look at the fixtures for the week ahead then, because there's lots going on around British Speedway. And um, as we head through the week, though, it's really dominated by the Speedway of Nations. We've got semi-final one at Voyens on the Wednesday. That's Poland, Australia, Latvia, Germany, USA, Ukraine and Finland. And then um, on the Thursday, it's Great Britain's round, uh, semi-final two, Great Britain, Sweden, France, Czech Republic, Slovenia, Italy and Slovakia. We do have some Jubilee League action, though, as well, if you're not down with the Speedway of Nations. Birmingham are hosting the Pool Pirates at Perry Bar on Wednesday and uh, Oxford versus Plymouth um, in the Jubilee League as well, both in the Jubilee League South and both those getting underway at 7.30. And then on Friday, we've got the World Under-21 Team Championship Final, the uh, SON2 that we were talking about earlier. Tom Brennan will be in that. Uh, that's at um, Voyons, of course. And a bit of Championship Jubilee action as well here in Britain with Edinburgh hosting Glasgow in the Scottish section, uh, Poole hosting Birmingham in the southern section and Scunthorpe versus Redcar in the northern section. And that match will be live streamed on the British Speedway Network uh, back at Scunthorpe once again where we saw some excellent racing between Scunthorpe and Leicester last Friday. And it's sure to be another ding-dong battle between Scunthorpe and Redcar. Uh, they always go very very well those two against each other at uh, the Eddie Wright Raceway Friday night it'll be on BSN so tune in for that and have a great week in Speedway whatever it is you're doing and wherever you're heading uh, one other little parish notice to bring you actually and this is from uh, Paul Ackroyd from the Speedway Riders Benevolent Fund and he'd like us to uh, let you know about um, an event that's going on to raise money for the Ben Fund, which, of course, is a hugely important uh, resource for all Speedway riders, and um, the majority of which don't actually ever know they're going to need them until they need it. Um, it's a walk to Cardiff. John Curtis is uh, a man who's going to be on a mission uh, next week is going to be walking from Foxhall Stadium, the home of Ipswich, to the Principality Stadium in Cardiff, starting on the 4th of August, getting there on the 12th, all to raise money for the Ben Fund. So uh, brilliant stuff. Well done, John. It's a distance of 264 miles a day, averaging just under 30 miles a day. If you'd like to follow him and uh, help him out with some cash, then you can go to justgiving.com slash crowdfunding slash walk to Cardiff 2022. And uh, so, yeah, search uh, walk to Cardiff 2022 on Instagram for all the updates as well. But good luck to John there. We'll try and get John on on next week's episode as well to, to find out a bit more about that, raising money for the Ben Fund. And, of course, the collections have started around the tracks as well. Every track will have a bucket coming round, probably your rider's heading out into the crowd to shake the buckets as well to, to get that cash off you. It's hugely important for all the riders and there is actually a prize for the team that raises the most money as well through the course of the season and that's currently held by the Bellevue Aces. So no pressure uh, on uh, any other club but uh, if you want to beat Bellevue you need to dig deep into your pockets. Big thanks to our special guest this week, Ollie Allen, Great Britain Joint Team Manager and good luck to you and Steady Ollie and, and all the boys and uh, maybe in a week from now we'll be talking about more medals, fingers crossed uh, but um, I'm sure the whole country are behind you and, and can't wait to see how we go and three Grand Prix riders in the lineup. I think we've done as much preparation as we possibly could but all the best. Yeah, keep your fingers crossed and we'll, um, we'll try and bring it home again. Ollie Allen, Great Britain Joint Team Manager and uh, all the best to the British boys over in Voyons, both in the SON and the SON2 over the course of this week. Have a great week wherever you're heading on your speedway. We'll be back with you next Wednesday.
No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Sports Social Podcast Network.